here and we'll get into specific companies and the NASDAQ. Now, let me pull up this last chart before I go to you, Chamath. It's been a strong year for the market, uh, S&P and NASDAQ, both up 11% year to date as of Thursday morning, but obviously a massive, I guess, do we call it a correction when it's, yeah, 20% is correction territory, Chamath? So your thoughts on the wider US market and the sell-off? I think we're in a low-key recession. So I think that we're going to probably go through a couple of very difficult revisions of old data. The thing to remember about non-farm payrolls isn't as much what the number is, but if you actually look to the number of times it then gets revised, the reality is that these things get revised constantly. And right now we're in this trend where we are overestimating and revising down. Sachs mentioned this, that that was the same with GDP. So we are, I think, in a tough situation. And then what you're seeing is folks that run very cyclical businesses are telling us in very plain spoken English that demand isn't there. So the one that was interesting this past week, Jason, you mentioned millennials, but like Airbnb, where you think all these young people are running around YOLOing what, whatever cash they have, Airbnb had a massive warning on demand. So when I think the excess capital, whether it's the stimmy check or what have you, has been exhausted, you're now starting to see it bear out in these cyclical businesses. I don't think the demand is there. I think we're in a recession. It probably becomes more obvious in Q3 and Q4. And so Powell's going to have to cut. The question is, will he overreact to the pressure? What's hotter than NVIDIA stock this year? It's something that would be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the near future. The rare limited edition NVIDIA keychain collectible. Our initial stock vanished in seconds. Get yours now from the link below. And cut 75 to 100 versus 25 and take it slow. Okay, Freeberg, technical definition of a recession is two quarters in a row of negative GDP. We haven't had that, but we're sort of bouncing along that possibility. Is the recession baked in or if they cut rates at the extent the prediction markets are predicting and they're signaling, do you think we have a nice rebound? How do you feel about the overall US economy? Obviously, you have to account for inflation and government spending. How much of government spending is driving economic growth? Today, the US is proposing to spend $7.3 trillion next year out of $25 trillion GDP. So the US federal government is roughly 30% of GDP. And we obviously still are tackling inflation. The real question is how much of the economy is growing because of productivity gains in the sector of the economy where people are making things and doing things versus the government using its ability to tax and borrow to drive growth in the economy by inflating numbers, by pushing revenue onto businesses, by pushing capital into the markets, by creating levered trades in the markets using their um, borrowing capacity and their taxing capacity. So that's the thing I remain concerned about. I, I mentioned this last week, I remain highly concerned about many sectors of the economy that are deeply challenged right now, particularly the industrial sectors, the manufacturing sectors, the agricultural sectors, but um, services and software sectors where you can raise prices and you have a nice high margin business, you can continue to, to grow and, and look good. But there are many parts of the, uh, the global economy and the US economy that are pretty challenged right now. Sachs, let's talk about uh, this soft to bumpy landing. Uh, consumers are definitely weakening on the low end. Airbnb and Amazon are example of bargain hunting, people who are looking for discounts, who want to save money with those services. Higher end services that have a bigger price tag like Uber and some of the high end retailers are showing actual growth and they're saying the consumer strong. So it was a tale of two cities during this earnings season with a bunch of the high end folks saying strong consumers on the high end, weak consumers on the low end. What are the chances we go into a recession? And you know, a second question for you, Elon was recently on Lex Friedman for I think uh, eight days or something. It was like a record podcast of how long he was on. But one of the things he talked about was that he had discussed with Trump 
And Vivek has been very strong about this on our podcast and other places. Uh, and he was a leading VP candidate of making the government more efficient and radically cutting the amount of spending. But there would be a reaction. So does the uh, potential GOP administration have a platform to cut costs massively or not? And do you think that, you know, that would have been maybe too unpopular to, to sort of unveil that plan now as a, as a presidential candidate in either party? I don't think they have that plan specifically because I just think that you would need you would need a supermajority in Congress to do something like that. And I just think that this election is going to be too close, regardless of who wins, to provide that kind of mandate. I mean, sadly, I think we do need to get government spending under control, but I think it's a long-term political problem. And I just think our political system doesn't have the will to fix it. I, I do believe Republicans would be better than Democrats on that, but I think that's the truth of it. To go back to your first question on the state of the economy, I had lunch with a very prominent investor yesterday who's very plugged in with the hedge fund community. And he said that the sentiment shift, you know, I'd say again, within hedge funds, professional investors, public market investors, had been very sudden that people were now very worried about the risk of a recession. Airbnb stock went down 15% in, in one day on soft demand. And what's driving all of this is, is consumer weakness, or at least fear of consumer weakness. You mentioned the rise in unemployment. It went from 4.1 to 4.3% month over month. So 4.3 is still a pretty low number by historical terms, but to jump so much in one month, that's a pretty big increase. And then, of course, it's up from 3.5% a year ago. So we're seeing pretty big increases in unemployment. 10% year over year, 5% month over month is very significant. Yeah. yeah. So these are big changes. There's real evidence of, of consumer weakness. And I think professional investors are, are getting quite worried about uh, the risk of a recession. And I guess just one last point on this is that if you were to remove the impact of government spending, it's pretty clear the private sector is in a recession. I mean, like we've been talking about, government's been going hog wild with spending. We have The government is running 6% of GDP deficits. Uh, the, the latest Q2 growth number was something like 2%. So if you force government to live within its means and to cut its way back to balance, we would definitely be in a recession. We'd have a negative growth rate. Uh, so I do think that the economy is looking pretty shaky all of a sudden. Uh, whether we actually tip over into a recession in the next few months, I'm, I'm not sure. All right. Well, listen, I want to corner everybody here with a question. You got to answer the question. You you can't uh, avoid the hard questions here on the All In Podcast. Chamath, sitting here a year from now, market up or we experience a recession defined as two quarters of negative GDP, which one is the more likely scenario? Mark it up or a recession, give it a percentage or just which is more likely? Freeberg, you're next. Well, those, so are not, your those, are, those are not opposing things. So you're saying okay. in a year from now? I don't, I don't honestly know. Okay. But I do think that we'll probably be in a technical recession. Okay, so you lean towards, I'll just go recession, no recession in the next year. But I also think that there's a pretty decent chance the market will be up. Ah, got it. Okay, so we could have a recession, but the market goes up. So to unpack that, I am with you on that same prediction because I do think people are addicted to efficiency. They're going to lay people off and earnings are going to keep ripping as these companies become managed so well. That's a small percentage of the economy, J. Cal. That's a few tech companies. But much of the manufacturing sector, the industrial sector, the ag markets, like there's a lot of markets where you don't have this option to just cut knowledge workers. The knowledge worker economy, the software economy has the ability to do that. The tech economy can do that. But much of the rest of the economy doesn't have a lot of maneuverability like we do in this in this fast growth, well, high margin yeah. kind of industry we work in. I think it's a good point, but I do see McDonald's, Starbucks, and some of those consumer retailers are taking steps right now to right size their businesses and offer $5 meals or $3 coffee. So I do think there's a shift in management and how they run these companies. That's about reduced forecast, right? So when their revenue decline, when their revenue forecasts have to be cut, they have to cut headcount. That's different than creating more efficiency. Well, the but operation. they're also cutting stores and they're I mean, cutting are, things are, and yeah, yeah, projects that, that, that are inefficient. So I just think there's going to be massive efficiency in all sectors. That's going to be the theme for the next year. But I mean, it's obviously- but That's, that's a loss of this. jobs and a loss of growth, right? So just to be clear, when you cut stores, you have less growth. When you cut jobs, that's because you don't have as much revenue growth. So those are about But earnings can go up, right? They can be supported, but you're still facing contraction. And you know, one of the challenges right now, a lot of food companies, a lot of 
retail companies have been raising prices to try and keep earnings going up. But there's hitting this natural inflection point where consumers no longer buy, where you find this tipping point. I don't know if you guys have been to the supermarket lately, but man, it is crazy expensive how, how like prices have gone up like 50 to 100% on like everything at the mm -hmm. supermarket. And this is like, it's basically impossible. We can, afford, we, we can deal with it, but like a large percentage of people, this is a big deal in terms of like, now you have to budget your life and you spend less. Matt and I, when we're here in Portofino, we go in the morning to the fishmonger and we'll buy, you know, fish for the family. It is unbelievably expensive. And, you know, we always think to ourselves, how is it possible that folks can actually choose to eat healthy and local? If they want to, it's next to impossible. What was a Branzino? Impossible. What was a whole fish? Tell us. You know, like if, <laughs> if you want to have like locally caught sole, it's like 48 euros a kilogram. Wow. Okay. And like, it's expensive. And wow. it's like, expensive feels like for more all than a restaurant. Of, <laughs> so to, to feed a family of seven, which is what we are, you'll have to spend, you know, $150, $200. It's not sustainable. It's not something that can that makes sense for enough people anymore because that probably used to be 40 bucks or 30 bucks but freeberg is right like we're in a real serious problem because it's it's like these systems have remained the way that they have been for a very long time and while other industries like the tech industry have captured all these incredible efficiencies but the problem is that then these other industries are what supports everyday people's everyday lives and in the absence of a way to actually reduce cost and improve quality, you end up where we are today. And I don't think that that's sustainable. Freeberg, greater chance of a recession in the next year or not a recession? You have to give an answer. Yeah, I think there's a great chance of a recession. Yeah, majority chance of recession, got it. But I do think that there's going to be uh, government programs to mitigate the effects, meaning you could see the markets, the equity markets continue to rally okay. on some of the government uh, programs and government activity which has become kind of like the learned behavior. It's like Pavlovian. It's like we we have a we have an economic problem. The government step the government steps in and spends money. Let me get an answer from Sachs. The reason why the markets could rally in the midst of a recession is because interest rates get cut. We've already seen that the expectations of rate cuts have now grown substantially. The markets are starting to price in 100 to 150 basis points of rate cuts this year, where before it was more like 25 to 50 basis points. So obviously, lower interest rates make stocks go up. So I think that's the, the main driver of the rally you're seeing right now, J-Cal, not the prospects for increased efficiency, because I think th th you know those prospects were already there. So are you majority case recession or, or majority case not recession in the next year? I've been predicting recession for like three years now, because I just think when you jack up interest rates so suddenly, so violently, you get recession. So I guess I, if, I ha if you pin me down, I'd say I recession. And I'll tell you okay. one of the reasons. One of the reasons why. Interestingly, is, I've just checked the notes, uh, Sachs. You predicted five of the uh, nine of the last five recessions. I know, I know. It, look, it's the same recession that I've been predicting. It's very simple. When you jack up interest rates yeah. from near zero to five and a half percent, that makes everything much more unless, expensive. Unless the government spends money, which has mm. been the counterbalance, right? And that's a lot of why governments did. And, and by the way, I have a theory on this. I think this is also why we have an open border policy or why um, the current administration has pushed an open border policy, because that can also be deflationary to counteract the effects of the interest rate accrual because of the it lowers wages overall and fills jobs. It lowers jobs. wages, it increases the workforce, et cetera, it creates more competitive workforce, but no one's allowed to publicly say that. And I do think that that's one of the primary motivating factors of having an open border policy. Well, people have been saying it. I think you just did. It's well said. If you look at job creation over the last four years, there's been no net new job creation for native born Americans. All the job creation has been foreign born or- Because native born Americans know, have too high of a wage expectation. That's the fundamental problem, right? And they're I'm too, not they're saying, too affluent, I agree. Yeah. I don't think it's too high. Right, and I'm not making an I argument one way or the other. I'm just highlighting, I think that this is one of the motivators for the policy. I think it'd be a lot better to let their wages rise. But in any event, let's not get political on it. Just to the point about recession, Jason. I mean, yeah, look, yeah. I've been predicting the same recession. But I think one of the reasons why it might finally come now, first of all, you've got a lot of investors are suddenly worried about it. There's been a big sentiment shift. I think the other thing is, I don't think we know all the bad news yet. Mm. Unknown unknowns, yeah. 
Well, n- none of us were tracking the end carry trade like very. I mean, it was something we may have heard of, but it's not like we were actively thinking about it until this past week. And the question is, how many more things are out there like that? And I also think that the pattern with this administration has been to hide the ball. They hid Biden's senility for years. Yeah, not to get political, though. <laughs> Zach, you just said uh, I'm just not saying, to get political. Not to get political. What's hotter than NVIDIA stock this year? It's something that would be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the near future. The rare limited edition NVIDIA keychain collectible. Our initial stock vanished in seconds. Get yours now from the link below.